we're running. Mm -hmm. Hi, I'm Steve Clemens. I run the foreign policy programs at a think tank called the New America Foundation in Washington, D.C., and I publish the blog, The Washington Note. I'm here with my friend Mohammed Shtea, who's visiting from Palestine uh, here in Washington for a conference uh, with the Aspen um, Institute Middle East Strategy Group, I believe. And uh, I'm here today to talk to him about the status of the unity talks, about the potential bringing together of Fatah and Hamas uh, which have been going on behind the scenes here in Washington, in Egypt, and other places. Uh, welcome, and, and what are the status of the unity talks? Well, uh, it will resume on April 1st. We are very hopeful that it will be concluded uh, successfully. The most important thing is that we are bringing Hamas to our terms rather than really going to the Hamas terms. The talks are so important uh, for us to uh, make the uh, two-state solution possible. Having uh, a successful uh, reconciliation talks, it does allow Gaza to come back into the Palestinian terrain. And not only that, uh, what is more important is the readiness for the a new cabinet in, cabinet in the making, that it is ready to accept the terms of the BLO and to accept the BLO commitments, including uh, all aspects related to the recognition of the state of Israel because the BLO was the party that has actually signed the Oslo agreement with, with the state of Israel. So there is there will be a new dynamic. We are also hopeful that this will relax the Hamas conditions on the release of Shalit as well as all aspects related to the deal of the Israeli soldier who is in captivity with the Hamas in Gaza. And also it will make it very possible for us to regain the initiative as Palestinians, prepare the ground for uh, uh, having a new Israeli government right. in place. Right. If yeah. the peace talks will be relaunched again, I think that will, the Palestinian house will be in order, it will be united, right. and this will facilitate peace talks again. Now, you're an advisor to President Mahmoud Abbas and your Minister for Economic Development uh, in the region, which means you have a sizable and important portfolio in, in the government as it is now. I know other of your colleagues don't necessarily, aren't enthusiastic about a unity government, aren't enthusiastic about finding a way to bring Hamas back in. Can you reflect a little bit on that, that, that fragmentation of view around the president and, and how your views stack up against theirs? Well, uh, I will tell you, it is obviously in the interest of Palestinians, wherever they are, whether in the authority or outside it, that the Palestinian unity is to be achieved. Mm -hmm. This is, it goes without saying. One and second important issue. Obviously, the question is whether you go into exclusive approach or inclusive approach. The inclusive is actually to bring all Palestinian factions into uh, one under one umbrella, and that is the umbrella that is the sole legitimate representative of the Palestinian people, which is the umbrella of the PLO. Not only that, but also there is a new change in the region. Arab Arab uh, reconciliation is taking place. Uh, United States is opening channels with Syria as well as there is a message from President Obama to Iran and so on. All that is going to reflect itself positively on the Palestinian-Palestinian reconciliation. So to have a Hamas included in a structure, it will actually reduce the Hamas influence and it will take it away from Iran, it will take it away from Syria and bring it into a formula in which it is ready to accept the PLO terms of uh, uh, of commitments uh, to the international community as well as to the security of the state of Israel. This is the important part of the story. But what is more important is that if all of us, whether Palestinians, Israelis, and the international community is speaking about a two-state solution, mm -hmm. you cannot have a three-state solution, which is one in Gaza, one in the West Bank, and then Israel. A two-state solution, it means a unification of geography of a Palestinian territory, uh, that the West Bank and Gaza is one geographical uh, one geographical entity. Otherwise, the whole idea of a two-state solution will be fully and totally evaporated if we don't finish this situation that has emerged in Gaza, unfortunately, in a very unpleasant way. From your viewpoint, where do you see the United States? I, I can't figure out if the United States wants to see a unity government or not. It depends who I talk to. So I don't know myself what U.S. policy is. But when you look at us, do you see the U.S. playing a constructive role, having any policy? What do you see? Well, I will tell you, we see very positive message coming from Washington. And I will tell you, without having a Syrian-American dialogue, 
Hamas could not have come to the Cairo reconciliation talks. So this is one. Second, Secretary Clinton in Sharm el-Sheikh, she was very explicit. She said to Abu Mazen in a, a public speech, we welcome a new government in the making as long as this government accepts the commitments of the PLO. And I, so the message from Washington is sound and clear. And I think that we are very much encouraged to see really Washington because the two states in, in the two state solution fits neatly within the overall strategy of the new administration of the American administration and it is a protection of the American interest in the region to have really a peaceful region a Palestinian state will really diffuse tension with Iran a Palestinian state will diffuse tension with Syria a Palestinian state does not give justification to anybody who wants to use the cause of Palestine for committing criminal acts in the name of the liberation of Palestine and so on and so on. So it is very important, a Palestinian state, a, a unification of a Palestinian territory to serve the political goal of having a two-state solution fits neatly within the interest of the United States to have a peaceful Middle East in order for uh, the interest of the United States to be protected. And I think this was very clearly expressed by uh, Secretary Clinton in her speech in, uh, in Sharm el-Sheikh for the donors conference to reconstruct uh, Gaza. Just two more quick questions. Do, do you think President Abbas really, really wants this? Does he see his political interests and the interests of his state uh, being enhanced by a unity government or damaged? Look, I was there when Abu Mazen gave instructions to the Fatah delegation in Cairo. He was very explicit, he was very serious, the instructions he gave to them that I want this to happen, but one, one important thing, I want a government that is capable to lift the siege on Gaza. Mm. I want a government that is capable to bring the Palestinian image in the most positive way possible. I am not for political sharing, I am for professional people to be in the government who are capable to reconstruct Gaza as well as prepare the country for the new elections to take place January 2010. This is, these are the two goals that the new government is uh, supposed to, to be. So Abu Mazen is very serious about it. Now, the most important thing is that Hamas has come to Cairo without any condition. Before they were putting conditions, the release of the Hamas prisoners in the Palestinian Authority jails, do this and do that, and this time Hamas is in a much weaker position ever be, that, uh, th than ever before. And therefore, they're coming to Cairo talks on our ground. We are not going to Cairo talks on their ground. And I think this is very important message that one has to look on the dynamics of the talks and where things April are going. First. April 1st. April 1st is going to be the next round. Yesterday, President Abu Mazen, he mentioned that the first round was only a brainstorming. The next round is going to be culminated with an agreement. And I think what he mentioned yesterday to the media, I fully uh, endorse uh, and uh, confirm his statement that everybody who has come to Cairo is actually in a position to come to an agreement. Remember, one important thing is not only Fatih and Hamas, there are 13 different Palestinian political factions right. who are actually calling for the same goal to be achieved, a unification of the Palestinian factions, a unification of the Palestinian geography, a unification of the Palestinian people in order for us all to achieve a two-state solution, to be in harmony with the international will, the international community who has been calling for a two-state solution, to live by side, a Palestinian state, to live side by side with the state of Israel so that we ensure the security of the state of Israel as well as achieve peace in the region. Now, I guess my last question is really about the personality of Khaled Mashal. I don't know Khaled Mashal. Uh, I, I hear mean. from people there, I know you're a member of the Fatah group. And, and, and the real question for people who get into this issue and very much earnestly want to see a unity government, want to see a change in the game, if you will, between Israel and Palestine and see a two-state solution in the near term, wonder about Khaled Mashal and the strength that he has to be a uh, to veto moves or either to be engaged for a while as a way to buy time to rearm, rebuild, etc. What is your answer to that? Because I have to tell you from someone in this business, it's very, very hard 
to to make people feel comfortable with um, uh, Hamas because uh, I recognize uh, the issues related to Israeli occupation, but there's an element of violence in Hamas which is which is which has been complicating for us trying to tell people, oh, have faith and trust this process. So, do you have any insights into Michel? Well, I don't know him. I have never seen him. But the most important issue is, look, this is a political game. At the end of the day, we need them. The Hamas constitute like 20% of the total uh, Palestinian forum, public mm -hmm. opinion, parliament, whatever. This is the real size of, uh, of Hamas. One second important issue is that my worry is a total isolation of them, it will breed even more radicalism. And you mm. move from Hamas to Al-Qaeda and so on. Mm. Inclusive approach, it will diffuse even the violent dimension that they have. Because at the end of the day, at the end of the day, what we are doing is we want to bring them to our terms. What is our, what are our terms? Our terms is actually to make peace with Israel on the negotiating table, not through violence means. And this is the most important thing. And Hamas, by all means, if they come under the Palestinian umbrella, whether in the parliament or in the cabinet, you're actually diffusing. Mm -hmm. um, I, I better say diffusing rather than saying taming the shrewd, mm -hmm. taming. But the most important thing is that the Palestinians, they need a unification of the goal and the goal is a two-state solution, and not only the unification of the goal, but also the unification of the means to achieve that goal. And the means that has been set on our side is through peaceful means on the negotiating table. Now, maybe they prefer that we do this dirty work. Mm -hmm. They don't want to be part of the negotiating table. But at the end of the day, believe me, we lost the elections for Hamas in 2006 simply because the peace process was not working. Mm -hmm. Simply, we have been negotiating this for the last 18 years since Madrid until today without very tangible results for the public. And we went into elections without really bribing, quote unquote, the public. You need to bribe the public with certain achievements on the ground. There are 612 military checkpoints, Israeli incursions, 11,000 Palestinian prisoners. Everybody remembers the name of Shalit, but nobody remembers the name of one single Palestinian prisoner. Regardless, but you've spent some time in Israeli jails, I understand. Well, uh, the most important issue for for us, as I said, is that really to bring everybody on on terms into this into this direction. So, therefore, whether Mashal is only one one person in this, if the, his people in Gaza are under siege and so on and so forth, and that's not his people; it's our right. people as well. Right. So, therefore, uh, to have them as part of the package, I think we should look at it in terms of really diffusing this violent dimension that Hamas has and bring them into a political process that is going to lead to a two-state solution. And this is the most important issue. By the way, Hamas does not reject a two-state solution. And I think this is very important that you engage them gradually in the structure. Mohammed, thank you very, very much. I'm so thrilled that you're engaged in this process. And I hope you'll come back often uh, to the New America Foundation and talk to the Washington Note about your your work because I think that you've got a perspective that I haven't heard enough of uh, near President Abbas. So thank you very much for joining thank us. Thank you. Thank you very much.